Yishem Adonam Avoach, Matav Adonam, Shalom everybody, we're in the Medina Zah, we're sitting outside due to uh, uh, the change on the climate <laughs> and we want to have some cold change and nice scenario. change of scenario. We would like to have it outside, hopefully Be'ezrat Hashem, everybody will enjoy it. Amen. Um, so, Behemet, on behalf of uh, Israel Foundation, I want to thank the Medina's family for hosting the Shi'ul, making efforts uh, um, to host Torah classes. May Hashem keep you safe, Amen. you and all the participants, all Amen. those who are watching us, among all, among all the tzaddikim, the righteous people. Amen. And Be'ezrat Hashem, the power of Torah will protect all of us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rabbi. Amen. Toda. Today we're going to talk about the Beracha of Hagomel. Hagomel is a Beracha that many people face lately in uh, the holidays. And I keep asking question, uh, questions, what, what is this all about, when I have to say, when I don't have to say. So I decided, well, let's focus on it for a class or two and try to answer questions like, who have to say it? What is Hagomel means? Um, when you say it and what's the reason you see people saying this special bracha uh, is children doing it wife, husband, a man, a woman time and all that so we'll start in a minute before that we'll do bracha Boruch Adonai Ah, you drink that, you have no corona. Okay. In four situations, one become obligated to recite the blessing of Hagomel. Hagomel means that Hashem redeem you. And he saved you from a special situation. Not everybody can say the Berakha of HaGomel. When we come obligated to recite the blessing of HaGomel on four occasions. Someone who has traveled overseas and has arrived safely at the port. What about people going on a daily basis? But what if you go under in a tunnel? We'll answer these questions later. Someone who has traveled across the wilderness wilderness. And, wilderness and has reached a settled area safely. Is it depend, is it? So you, let's say you uh, cross a uh, wilderness, right? With a bus or a car or a jeep or a train. Or airplane? Does it make any difference? I cross the wilderness with uh, I don't know with airplane over the uh, desert. Do I have to say it? Is that considered crossing a wilderness, a desert, or it's only for those who walk with or without camels, for example? So you're saying, Esther's saying, it doesn't matter. You're crossing it regardless. It doesn't matter with vehicle or without. No. So. With airplane or helicopter. Don't know what you mean with the class. Huh? With airplane or helicopter, you have to say Hagomel anyway if you reach it. Be oh, because of being in an in, in airplane. Yeah. I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying. Uh, number three, someone who has who was ill <coughs> and has recovered. So, what the, what's the definition of being ill? Fever, bedridden, not feeling well for two three days, bed feeling. The doctor pulled a tooth, wisdom tooth. What's the meaning? What's the definition of being ill? Like you were it's very it's very individual, no. Admitted to the hospital, you're saying. So what if he was not hospitalized? He was um, discharged, you're saying? Uh, release. After an hour, five minutes, two days, a day? 
what's the rules? But even what's if it's not life threatening, even if it was just an illness that you couldn't function your normal everyday. You have to say a gomel. We have to yeah, okay. So we have to be very careful with that. Why? Because we are about to say beracha mm -hmm. with Hashem's name. Yeah. So we don't want to say Hashem's name in vain, right? We have to have, to have very strict rules. Are you saying bad written? Okay, we'll see. And the fourth one is if someone, some, and someone who has imprisoned and has now been released. So what does that mean? If you were stopped because of a traffic violation and you were taken to a, a prison for a few hours or a whole day, you have to spend the 24 hours. <coughs> What's the deal? So these are the categories and we'll go into details. Okay, any questions before we start? Did you, are you familiar with the Beracha of Hagomel? Yes, yes, when you, when you travel to the Philippines, you get back when you So how many times you said, once or twice? Just on the Shabbat, when you Shabbat. So you went to the Philippines, and you, when you come back, you say that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what about... Before you also travel. It have to be after. So what? What? Oh, this is different. This is going to be about tefillat aderech, oh, a special okay. blessing. It's a blessing before you start. Hagomel is a different kind of prayer. Yeah. When I come back, that's the time. One day, we'll learn about tefillat aderech. Let's say Lishama is driving to his work. Is it like Forty-five minutes. Does he have to say tefillat haderech, prayers that Hashem will save him from whatever? Or do I, if I drive five minutes to Tam Tam to the grocery store, do I have to say it? What's the rules? If I'm driving highways or non-highways, that everything has to have ba based on uh, uh, rules. Okay. So first of all, how do I do the beracha? Just by myself at home? Okay, so Hagomel, these, the, the blessing of Hagomel must be recited in the presence of ten men. Two of whom are Torah scholars. Our sages derive this rule from the verse in Tehillim in Psalms. It's Psalm 107, 32. Quote, they shall exalt him among an assembly of people and praise him where scholars raised. Recite, I'm sorry. Recite. The Hebrew word of assembly slash kahal, congregation, okay, refers to a group of at least 10 people. The person reciting the blessing counts as one of the 10. So another word for minion is kahal? Mm hmm. Assembly. I know that word kahal. That's the name of our group. Of what? Congregation. Congregation. Yeah, correct. That's correct. Kahal. Yeah, in Torah it says Eda. Eda also. Eda yeah, means. Eda or Kahal. Right. Eda. Eda. Eda is the word. Less than that, it's not considered a minion. Over 10 is already Kahal or Eda. Congregation, group of people, and so forth. Okay, so that's the rule. 10 and at least two scholars. In case you don't have scholars, but you have 10 people, that they are Shomer Shabbat, observant, but you can say it. Now, I'm going to go to the details of it. If there are no Torah scholars present, anyone who is obligated to recite the blessing should recite it anyway, as long as 10 people are present. If there are less than 10 people present, however, he must not recite it. Even if there are 10 people present, present. If the person recites it silently and the people do not hear him, it is if he recited without 10 people present. Present or present? Present. 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 Yeah, present. How you spell present gift? It's the same way. The same. See it's English? It's just said, it's just said you see why English is crazy? Present <laughs> and if someone cannot gather 10 people together, it is because nobody like him and he should... No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> get a ten people, it <laughs> is <laughs> recommend. <laughs> you should get a life. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's some social issues. It is recommended to reset the blessing without God's name. How long after the travel, how long after you recover, you should say it immediately, the same day, you have two days, three days, a week, a year? What if you forgot and a month later, I didn't say Hagome? Should I do it standing or sitting? Can do it what is more appropriate to praise Hashem? Standing, standing. or sitting? Standing. There you go. One must stand when reciting the blessing of Agomel if someone recited it while he was while seated. However, he has fulfilled his obligation. Yeah. <coughs> How would you welcome a guest? What is more appropriate while standing or sitting? Standing. 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 With respect. With respect. The Allah actually says you should welcome them, go to them, bring them in. When they leave, walk with them at least a few steps. But if you are sitting and they enter the house, you still fulfill the mitzvah, but it's not and at its highest level. Okay? There's a problem that the person cannot stand. Then. Correct. If he's sick or is old or whatever, what is the reason? So how you should say the Be'achah, the proper procedure is to stand up in the presence of the congregation and to recite loudly, and I'm going to quote the Be'achah, Baruch Atah Hashem Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaGomel Lechayavim Tovot Shegemalani Kol Tov May you, God, our Master, King of the Universe, be blessed, for He is the one who bestows good things on those who are guilty. He has bestowed every good things on me. You know what bestowed mean? Give. Give. Give is a good word. Bring upon or give. Good. The congregation responds, Amen. And then each person offers the following prayer on behalf of the person who has recited the blessing. They respond with, May God who bestowed every good things on you continue to bestow every good things on you forever and ever. Then the person who had recited the blessing of Hagomel should respond, Amen, may this be his will. So you see, it's a back and forth, back and forth. You sing Baracha, they respond Amen, and they're blessing you, and you respond with Amen. This is one of the most significant Barachot in the Jewish life. When you actually, it's an act of being grateful to Hashem from saving us from whatever. For, you know, for instance, uh, sickness, God forbid. You know, let's say a corona guy. He recovered. Should he say a gomel? Yes. Go ahead. Rabbi, there was in the news, they went to Fiji. Very young couple, very active. And they went to the gym. They have a two-year-old son. And the lady is from Philippines. They went to Fiji. Something mysterious caught them on the way to the hospital. They both get killed. And since... I mean, they died of some sickness, and the government will not accept the body na unless they get cremated. It's wow. so sad because they went there to have fun, and you're right, this prayer is very important because you don't know what kind of sickness is in that place. That you're and let me tell you, nobody knows nothing. We don't know what's going to happen the next minute. Exactly. We almost lost the president of the United States due to a pretzel. Mm -hmm. He was eating pretzel, and he got choked. I don't know if you heard the news. And someone gave him the Heimlich, pushed it, and he saved. That was Bush, Bush, Jr. You don't know. People have plans in life. Yeah. I was, uh, <clears throat> lately, I, 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 uh, I more watched the news. And it was really sad news the other day. It was a week ago, I think, on the Cholamoed that I saw. A family in Israel, a father and two sons died of Corona. The father was 71 years old. 
the child was, one of them was, his child was 54, another one 51. So they said, you know, the older guy maybe he has some backgrounds and he has some other sickness, but two of his boys were really strong and never saw a doctor. Yeah. They probably saw a doctor, but you know what it means. It means like strong like an ox. They said, uh, and b one of them, the girl said that she spoke with her father and he felt bad from the hospital. He was on the phone and she, he said, I'm coming back in two days. A day or two, I'm coming back. That, that's the feeling he has in his body. And all of a sudden, he felt very, very sick. And within hours, uh, he finished. And, and the doctor, the interview the doctor, the doctor said, this is what's so tricky with the corona. You either, you know, feel really good and you get out of it, or you feel bad. And it's the climate or the, how you call it, the, this climate, whatever. It's, uh, the change is really uh, drastic, dramatic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he says it's very tricky with the corona. They, they, they all of a sudden uh, feel regressions. They, they, they feel that uh, they, they lose conscience or whatever, and then they, they have nothing to do for them. It's really sad. Every day we live, you know, we appreciate yeah. before we hear. And it's, not, it's people around us, people that we know that have that. My brother-in-law has the corona. He is my sister's brother and lives in Israel, a wonderful guy. He has corona and he was, has to be in quarantine in the house. And he told me about the symptoms and the pain and all that. And he mentioned that he lost the sense of smell and taste. And even till now, he, he, he still, it's not 100%. Now you appreciate what Hashem gave you, the, 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 the sense of smell. I've suffered in 2007. I know what he's talking about, from polyps, heavy, heavy polyps in the nose. I got it through allergy because I had some carpet in the house. We replaced it, Baruch Hashem, and I felt really good after. But it was, I have massive polyps that the only way to remove them was with surgery. So in Israel, I did the surgery in 2007. But I remember the whole year before that, I really, really suffered. You know, I couldn't, you eat and you don't taste anything. <clears throat> you can't feel, it's, it's like, Everything you eat, it's like sand. You eat tasteless. And I prayed to Hashem and I said, Hashem, Hashem, forget the food. Just let me do bore atze besamim and abdala so I can say this. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem blessed me. And a few days after the surgery, everything got back. Only when you have a lack of something, you appreciate that. You know, sometimes Hashem puts you all over. Uh, so you appreciate so I'm saying no don't do that we appreciate from now everything life the sense of smell the way we we walk the, 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 the fact that we can talk we can see now we have to appreciate everything and say Hashem to Hashem and give in thanksgiving for everything He gave us we, we don't need signs anymore Hashem we understand we want the easy way not the hard way Next, it's also, uh, it is commendable re to recite before blessing the following in Tehillim 111.1 and 107.8, Hallelujah, I will thank God with, entire, with my entire heart in the company of the upright and their congregation. They will thank God for His kindness and for His wonders that He performs on behalf of people. Look at the Helene. Psalms is full of thanksgiving. Appreciating Hashem. King David is actually teaching us something. Especially at the worst time of his life when he was pursued by his enemy. He was helpless. Even then, he thanked Hashem. In this horrible situation, when he was held by enemies, not even Jews, Achish, the king of Gat, you know that uh, he was caught by Goliath's brother. He was chasing after a deer. And then, anyways, one of the tests Hashem had him go through. And he was brought to Achish, the king of Gat. So he said, this is King David. Let's kill him. So he told them he can't be. Well, they said, why not? He said, he said to them, first of all, how do you know that this is him? You know, back then they didn't have TV. If you didn't see him from close range, you didn't know that it's him. 
They said, I recognize him. I know him really good. Secondly, he said to them, Achish, the king of God, we had a deal. The deal that Goliath offered is whoever wins, wins. You have to respect the deal. Achish was a, a honest person. So the, his servant says, okay, if that's the deal, we want to remind you that Goliath also said that the loser will become servants to the winners. If that's so, please move from your seat and let him sit there. So he said to them, is that the case? Okay, you can uh, do them whatever you feel like. And David hear that. You know what King David did? Pretend to be <laughs> drilling on his beard, writing on the board on on the walls. Achish, the king of God, owe me a hundred dollar, and he, it's nonsense. He start to scream and yell. <clears throat> his daughter, Achish, king of God, his daughter has some depression, mania, depression issues, and his wife's also. The wife screamed from there. The daughter from there. <laughs> king David here. King uh, Achish says, "Oh my God." Do I have a lack of crazy people in my house? I had to brought this guy. Do you think this is a king? King of Israel said, David, someone look like him. Get him out of my house. He was acting crazy and that was saved him. Yeah. By the way, why it happens to them, you know? Because one of the questions that King David, I don't want to say question, but he asked God, he said, I don't understand, <coughs> is about the spider, about the, not the bee, the... The web, spider web, no? Spider is one. No, it's like a bee. No, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, oh, the, the wasp. wasp. The, the, the wasp, the spider, and craziness. Why well, Hashem brought crazy people to the world? And Hashem told them, one day you will need to use all these three. And now he has to use this act. Of course, it was to teach King David a lesson. Don't question me. Everything happens in the world is for, is for a reason. We discussed that before. King David was praying when he was got, when he got caught, and during his craziness and after, and praising God for saving him. He didn't complain. Why you put me in this position? He praised God. He says, "This is one. This is my journey in this world, and how to go through these obstacles and this test. When you accept life this way. You, your life are much easier." You can elevate yourself spiritually to a high level because you minimize questions to the minimum. You understand that everything happens for a reason. And, not, and, and, and even more than that, you, you're actually praising Hashem for putting you in such situ situations. I'm saying that so we can learn that even someone, God forbid, got... Uh, sick with corona, I got, it was positive with corona, don't worry, it's for a good reason. Maybe Hashem wants you to be immune. Maybe it's for, I don't know what the reason is, to, to wipe some of the other road, the sins you've done before. Do what you need to do to save yourself. To stay healthy. But, don't question God. Ever, never. Okay. Now, did you notice did you notice that people do that after reading the Torah right it's a common mistake people feel that they can say Hagomel only when there's a Torah reading like Monday Thursdays holidays or Shabbat or Rosh Chodesh and it's a big mistake you can say it every day so why are people uh, mistaken because the, the halacha is to do it with 10 people and you have Sefer Torah you have 10 people that's it but anytime you, there's 10 people gathered, you can do it. For example, a woman that gave birth and they do Shalom Zohar. Or they do uh, Brit Yitzhak the night before, according to Sefaradim. So usually they do it at the house of the new baby born. And they bring, the wife comes from the room and they, she said, a gomel, and she, that's it. And she uh, did her obligation did the mitzvah of saying agome. Why, by the way, a woman that gave birth has to say agome? She were not sick. It can be a life and death situation depending on the delivery. Right? It can be a life and death situation. Even if she was scheduled, 
to do a C-section. Wednesday, 2 o'clock, she's scheduled, she come with the purse. <laughs> she do that, by Sunday she leaves. Even that, every situation like that is life-threatening situation. And she thank God for keeping her alive. Questions? Go ahead. That's true. Thank God today we have um, hospitals and equipment that helps and to save many, many lives. Imagine just before that, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, many babies died. Today they put them in an incubator and they saving lives like, it's unbelievable. Okay. Who? For sure, for sure. Okay. Um, now, what about women? A woman obligated to say hagomel, or it's only after giving birth. What if a woman traveled? What if a woman uh, was? Uh, I mean, uh, anyone, any, any of the four categories that we mentioned. Allah says, men and women are equally obligated to recite the blessing of Hagomel and to recite it in the presence of ten men. If a woman has given birth, she becomes obligated to recite this blessing after seven days, assuming she has recovered from the birth by that time. She may recite it in her home in the presence of ten men. Her husband cannot recite the blessing on her behalf. She must recite it herself. Even if the woman is Nida, there is no reason for her to postpone reciting the blessing until she has purified herself. Because we are afraid she might forget. Or who knows if she'll be able even to do it after. Okay, questions? Is there a punishment? Esther. If there is no way for you to gather ten people, then you should you can say without Hashem's name. If you can wait, knowing that tomorrow you will have ten people, but then you better wait. I misunderstood it because we always say in the synagogue, so I thought it has to be in the synagogue. No, no, in the presence of the, even at home when you have people, ten people you know, for seuda, you can say it. Now. Um, it is best to recite the blessing of a woman during the daytime, but when necessary, it is permissible to recite it at night. What about a child? Does a child have under bar mitzvah age? Now, let's say become ill, was hospitalized, even at home, and he recovered. Should he say Hagomel? Can he say Agomel? It's a blessing when they mention Hashem's name. If a child under a mitzvah age become ill and recovered, he also should recite the blessing of Agomel in the synagogue after being called up to the Torah. Wow. This is certainly the true for a child over bar mitzvah age. Okay? We know that according to the halacha, even a child can be one of the seven olim. What time is it? Uh, 8.36. What time we started? 8. Okay. Two malachot. What about a father that wants to say on, his, on, on behalf of his son? His son? So we just say, let your son do it. No, no, but his son is two years old. One year old. Mm -hmm. Six months old. He can't say it. The father wants to say it on behalf of his, of his son. The answer is, if, if a child under a bar mitzvah age become ill and recover, his father may not recite the blessing of Agomel. It has to be personal. Hmm? 
It's to be a personal thing. A personal thing, right? What if one went through all four categories? It was traveling, and it was sick, and it was in prison, and uh, they have to say for each one, or one can cover for all of them? One. One can cover. If someone traveled overseas, fell ill, and recovered, and then he was in prison for a crime and released, and immediately set out on a trip over the wilderness. He has four reasons to be obligated to recite the blessing of Agomel. Despite this, he should recite the blessing only once, having in mind to thank God for each salvation that he was granted. Kapish? Kapash. No, car accident, it's not a reason to say Hagomel. We haven't been saved because it's not one of the four categories. Um, I will conclude. No, you know what? Let's stop here because the next one is a tricky one. I will ask that Bezal Chain for next week. Remember, we said that someone is if he's traveling overseas. He has to say Hagomel, right? Fine. Someone came from Israel to Dallas for a medical treatment. He just traveled. He landed in DFW. He wants to come to Shul to say Hagomel. Why did you come here? Well, he has to go through uh, some, I don't know, medical uh, treatment, a procedure. Should he wait till after the procedure or he should say right now? That's a question and it's a tricky question. Think about it. Bezat Hashem will answer that next week. Just remember we are page 391, Halacha 17. We continue in our next class. It's going to be Bezat Hashem uh, a little bit short today. Um, momentarily. Please uh, join us on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation. I want to thank everybody who participated in the show. May Hashem give you beracha in your life, in good livelihood, and in good health. May Hashem save you from anything bad in this world. And the glory of Hashem will be upon you, will be protected at all time. Please go to our website and give us support to teach more and learn more Torah and support families in need. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you.